2 or level 3 of his damage deal. But even like this, the one position Razor is gonna be free farming for a little while. And then he needs to fight very early. That's kind of the drawback and the reason we don't see Razor played as a carry every day anymore. That hero needs to actually hit his snowball timing, but so far he's doing just that, as that will be uh, first blood going the way of focus. I'm sorry, I am still a little bit tired, you know, just woke up for some of these amazing Dota games, but it looks like Enigma, well, he's not quite gonna perceive this game as amazing, as one more hit is gonna do the trick. Down he goes, under the tower, focus on his razor, now starting to get fat. Now becoming harder and harder to kill with every kill he gets. Still just waiting as the rotation comes back around from the tiny, but does it come in time with the amazing body, body blocks that may not be one more hit? And they will get the Enigma going to the razor as well. Bait being ran down 4 to 1 in the kill department already. As just better. Ooh, Tombstone gets put down, and that will be one of those return kills. Not quite yet, but in dying, he will try to leave that one to his team. Lashrek picks it up, there's the bonus kill on Tiny, and now just better. They are definitely feeling just better this game. This is the type of gameplay they were looking for, bringing the like, and over on the mid lane super early on, Enigma Eidolons are still kind of... All the while, Dusa is just enjoying the pressure over on top lane as no ancient creep yet. Dusa still has an easy time creep army, but over on bottom lane, Enigma gets committed for. Do they really want to go though? Says the Kunka with an X marks coming in, and now instead that super high value lash kill will be annihilated. They're trying to go for follow up kill, but not quite able to get the follow up kill. It's a double kill for Focus instead, who's really enjoying himself at this point. And it will be a cleanup for the Razor as well. Triple kill. A good bit of harass coming. Out from the Enigma still. Though the Eidolons, at least, that's the good news. The Eidolons aren't gonna get that much stronger now. Level 7 is really when you got your peak harass frame on the Enigma. Whereas with the Black Hole... Oh my god, they find the Blink 2-man Black Hole. One of them barely got missed by the Black Hole. But he will be tossed and right back into it he goes. Black Hole over now. As they didn't really get a single kill out of that, but Bait's still trying so hard. Now, however, Razor is taking all of their core's damage away, and they're gonna be forced to back off. Maybe not. The magical damage is there for Razor. Razor, though, being kept safe by his team as Lashrek sets up for an extra kill. Focus, mega kill. Going to work out for them, Bait, however. They don't quite want to jump, they're instead trying to go about it the careful way and will get the first kill. Taking away the Aegis, the ship not quite perfectly connecting as the one man, two man black hole came on out there, but is that really gonna be enough? Cause Lycanthrope, while they may have to use the black hole against him, he still wants to go for a kill, will punish the tiny, that's another one. And now your damage is gone for bait again. This is the issue with Dusa Dress. This is why I'm not feeding that Dusa of, their, of theirs at all. Because, yeah, every time Dusa gets her damage stolen, they lose the team fight. They don't even need to kill her, they just need to get raised. Bit of damage coming out, and boom. Yeah, focus. He's having the game of a lifetime. He has a single freaking death this game on the Razor, which was kind of by unfortunate out of position stepping. But that isn't gonna dissuade the Razor. On the contrary, he is gonna try being all the more aggressive. It's gonna be another one on the Undying as the team fight still rages on. It's gonna be the Bad Rider. Caught, but not quite dead yet, as... It's gonna be just the one kill so far. 
traded for Tiny. It could be a lot worse, but look at what's being done to the Rex in the meanwhile. Razor, is he gonna get out without his Aegis? But it looks like the initiation is there from Tiny with a toss. So while the win rate is escalating even more, bait, they are still feeding the pressure from this Razor. It's Razor trying to run down people left and right. They aren't going to get a single kill for that as Razor is eventually going to lose his Aegis. But this is a Razor with Butter. Oh no, Lashrak! Lashrak screwed up! He put on his BKB and walked into the black hole. Oh no! Well, they're still way ahead as far as the gold goes. So Bane and Enigma are just going to die for that in like literally three right clicks needed. But that was awkward, that was actually the first time that Bait have won a fight in several freaking minutes. Lashrak doesn't quite get my X marked back, Kunka dying fast, but Medusa, she says, you know what, you've been bullying and annoying me all game long, now I'm online, now I actually deal damage worthy of a carry. And yeah, now we're gonna see more of these punky little Medusa right picks flying everywhere in the team fight. On bottom lane, the initiation isn't quite gonna be there, instead it will be Bad Rider jumping in with an amazing two-man flame break, and it's only the Bad Rider who's caught in the black hole, so they will save him with an Eels. Once again, they trade that support Bad Rider for the core Enigma's black hole, as Dusa comes in, dealing huge damage with the split shot, though. Just better, they need to be careful about how to approach this fight, but in comes Lashrak with a beautiful blink and a lot of damage as the backlines are kind of low health. It is not them who's dropping here. Dusa gets her damage stolen once again rapidly by the Razor, has to teleport out, will instantly get the TP counter used. And yeah, any last words they ask before getting that huge carry once again. Dusa! Now that Medusa is actually finally having a game, she is playing so well, but playing a really good Dusa after you've lost the laning stage just isn't... The aggression mounting with a two-man smoke as either of them ready to jump. But there's the jump from the Bat Rider instead. After they clean up top and yeah, Bane, are you gonna buy back? Because I think even if Bane buybacks, it's just not gonna be enough against these huge amounts of damage. Dire Brace gradually being cleaned up. What are you gonna do then, says the Razor? Come at me and give it your best shot. Cause yeah, with that Aegis, with the damage strain, he's always gonna have sick value in the team fight. I get everybody says that Stormspirit is the best, like, Aegis carrier, but nah, nah, just look at this. I mean, that's actually the one without the Aegis going down, so losing the Undying is a lot more awkward than Razor dying first. Now the Razor is dead, after having tanked pretty much the entire enemy team, the question is, can he do it again? A nice black hole from the Enigma. And while well, Nygma land that nice black hole, at least one guy will be killed still. But at the end of the day, it's looking like Bait are defending this extremely well. They will get the bonus kill there onto the Lashrak. Straight up 3v5ing that. What a long and chaotic team fight. But the Grand just. As the initiation is there from the Bat Rider, he gets tossed back and Bane ulted, but that's a Bane ult traded for a defensive tombstone and a Bat Rider. Okay, fair enough. At least they lose their support Bat Rider. While on the other end of that fight, people are deciding, you know what, the Dusa is too strong, let's just back off. And Dusa. You gotta be careful here. Dusa has to be so freaking careful. Stepping out of position and 
just getting jumped once without a good black hole, being there in retaliation, be it with the bad rider lasso, be it with the like razor just stunning you and dragging you out of position. It's huge, but speaking of stuns, it is a very obvious initiation. So the enemy just goes, haha, got a load of sorb, what you gonna do now, bad rider? Yes, we're just waiting, waiting around. There is gonna be a double cheese for lots of good provisions and a healthy meal while pushing in the base. Out comes the knife X marks, but guess what? With the Eul's Kunka, he is gonna be locked out of position. Out comes a black hole, though, keeping them all locked in place. Only one dies, but without a buyback and without an undying, they gotta think twice here. Because the tombstone saves are huge, but they will get the enigma for that. They will force four buybacks on the side of bait, as bait still trying to somehow hold on to their base. The one person that can't die the do And it looks like nobody quite wanting to initiate. But it's mostly to the thanks to those great disengages coming out continuously. The bad rider from the looks of it gonna go down again, but nope, not yet with the tombstone. Uh, yeah, this is over. This is absolutely over. They're still fortifying, but there it goes. GG's. Oh, that was a great game to start of the day. As Brood Mother still being pursued. There's the glimpse. Nicely done. This could be the first blood and for the anti mage, no less. Ooh. Mary Y. He just barely got it. The right tick. It was already happening. Anti mage needed just one more slash with his sword. But no such luck. Mary Y secures the kill as now Wind Ranger gets ran down by the Night Stalker. A little bit more damage. But no such luck. Wind run being used every time at the like last second while the attack animation has already started or while the projectile has almost hit the Wind Ranger and Wind Ranger just keeps getting away with this. That just better. They got a huge mid game timing, but the mid game is still five minutes away. And that second night for the Night Stalker it's gonna be huge for Bait. You know that Bait, the next time it becomes night time, are just gonna take that Night Stalker and run people down left and right using him. Lashrak is being chased, but guess what? Broodmother now has all of those little spiders to annoy the crap out of Anti-Mage and the Dazzle, but Dazzle is there to deal with the spiders, forcing the back again as there is kills happening left and right. Night Stalker gets power shot down for that one, but by the end of the day it's gonna... No jump on the anti mages. They simply don't have the resources and. It's gonna be Oracle feeding once again. Uh, I feel so bad for whoever's playing that Oracle because he's not doing a bad job, but I do joke frequently about supports not having human rights, and it is one of those games where now the Dragonite is also just getting smashed in the face. Lashrak manages to bait out the mana void at least so he has a few more seconds that he survives the anti-mate and a nice return kill on the disruptor there although it did require them to buy back their oracle as another avalanche toss makes short work of the spider Ooh, bonus kill bonus kill not quite Nicely done, escaping the silence and jump combo from the Night Stalker, but there's the nuke coming out from Dendi delivering the damage. Dendi on a mega kill streak again. And mind you, Dendi, he did just die to the Dragonite not long ago for a lot of money. Is there an... Ooh, Tiny, he was uncertain whether he wanted the jump or not, but with the Night Stalker follow up there for the silence. He will get it, and while silenced, Oracle cannot defend himself, he cannot do anything, cannot say those prophecies of his, as that will be a follow-up kill on the Lashrak. Night Dog is still alive, still tanking through a good amount of damage. Anti-Mage is being focused, Shadow Grave already used on the Night Dog, as Anti-Mage gets tossed back, Anti-Mage still alive! 
but they will get him. 2 for 3, but in exchange for shutting down that huge anti mage, they are more than happy with that deal, as it is gonna be another heal slash nuke from the Dazzle. And eventually it will be enough to finish off the Brood Mother Night Stalker running in for more, but look at that Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight out of position means Dragon Knight just dies. Yeah, this is really awkward. That's a huge gank and it doesn't do anything at the end of the day. The fighting still will happen eventually with the Tiny being the first one to die. One huge kill down from the side of bait and a second one dies. Anti-Mage, while well, they were looking for him the moment he left the lane and thought he teleported top, he in fact wasn't, but that kind of ends up being a drawback. Because, yeah, while the avalanche was there, they didn't really have the follow-up damage. Butterfly will be his next, like, main power spike. Butterfly plus the Skull Basher. Skull Basher is so important against Dragon Knight. And I think the fact that anti-mages like to pick up Skull Bashers is a large re reason as to why the draft has been picked like this. But after that Roshan, a perfect initiation onto three people. So just better, they may get themselves a free Aegis, but it ends up not quite being so free. Two people down, that is gonna be three people down. Do they keep the Aegis on the Broodmother at least? Does not look like it. Anti-Mage coming to sit on top of the spider and that is gonna be such a nice play for an Aegis they do not get to keep by the end of the day. Yeah. All the while Anti-Mage, like I said, they need to put the nail in the coffin so Anti-Mage, he's already doing his favorite pastime pretty much of just hitting buildings and trying to, well not even red, but kind of red in the sense that he's not with his team and now look now he's gonna do the same thing on bottom he blinks away and he's like oh oh go ahead initiate a team fight but this time around they actually will initiate with the BKB holy crap the second anti-mage leaves not only do they initiate they catch his dazzle anti-mage jumps back in again to try and deliver some damage but has to go back out as wind ranger running for her life will be tossed will be right clicked by the night stalker's night stalker zoning back the Dragon Knight and going to work on those towers, going to work on those barracks, doing a lot of damage. Initiations attempts still happening, but not really, you know, the full commit. They just want to keep the anti-mage out of their base for as long as possible, and the Oracle gets to survive there, will give himself the magic immunity and run away. Now that he even just got one item to work with, Oracle is a whole different beast, but out comes uh, Night Stalker with the BKB, with the silence, just not letting Dragon Knight press any buttons. His Oracle goes down. The Dragon Knight soon to follow. He's holding his own thanks to the Oracle Ultimate, but only for so long before he's forced to instantly buy back. The Anti-Mage still jumping in as the GG's are already called. And I mean, I did tell you guys, Bait are the type of team who want to double down on one carry pick, on one core pick, and ride that core pick to victory. Well, here they actually managed to do it. And that's a kill over on top. Actually, a trade with Troll diving for the center of War Runner, getting the kill with the last range projectile that was flying after him, but dying for that himself. And Bane goes down by the troll. And Skylark gets taken down, but who they want is this big, impossible to kill Dragonite. Well, I say impossible to kill, but down he goes. And Grimstroke, a little bit more damage. Ooh. 
manages to survive. Ooh, close one on the Magnus, but eventually they will not just find the Magnus, but also if their centaur killed. So Magnus, I'm not sure if his team was actually yelling like space, make space, make space there, or if Magnus is just the type of player who always goes like, ooh, enemies are running at me. I can have some fun with this. Come and catch me if you can, and then end up not catching him. Centaur War Runner trying to get away with the ultimate. Doesn't quite escape. Cause they want to go for the turn run. Wait a second. Did they have vision on the like middle lane and bottom lane at once? Cause I think so. A single TP would have fucked up that play, uh, screwed up their play. But they didn't. They didn't. I was expecting the troll to get like one person teleporting behind him, turning around and, you know, doing the multi-hero slow, but it ended up not quite resulting in enough. Magnus, dying, 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 dying... Yeah. Bait, they look to be doing it, mostly because the IO made all the difference in the world. Dragonite only has the one death, and Troll is going pretty okay as far as net worth goes. As you can see, Troll is way up there together with the Dandy Keeper of, with Dandy Keeper of the Light and the rest of the bunch. As it's gonna be a jump on the Keeper of the Light, Keeper of the Light getting obliterated by the Dragonite. Nice little return kill, Dragon Knight. Revealing that blink dagger of his. As over on top lane, more is happening with Troll not getting the ultimate off. He, he didn't even have it skilled. Bait, still only 2k ahead, but they're doing some serious work, whereas the Troll simply isn't coming online time and time again. Bait, up to a 3k lead. They're feeling confident now that... Chaos Knight is extremely hard to kill and actually quite good at frontlining once again. Double initiation, trying to go for a triple initiation. Grimstroke, however, is just killed off with the nice IO ultimate to escape at least, but what good is a nice IO ultimate against the troll? Asks the troll warlord. Troll at least survives the team fight for now, but his ultimate ends and he is just executed, whereas Chaos Knight, not even breaking a sweat, Io almost takes out to the Firefly, but manages to survive and it's literally one dying for three. So I think the only way that just better are actually feeling that confident against Bait is if they are the ones dictating the pace of the game, if they are the ones forcing Bait to make compromise after compromise, because the other way around. Bait, after understanding the aggression, after understanding the way that just better like to play, they have figured out two amazing counter drafts in a row as Astral still being ran after, but Astral on that bad rider of his, just trying to run via the portal. He's being pursued by a big angry horse though. And that will be the kill going to the Centaur War Runner. No more kills happening, but this Chaos Knight, he's still free farming and he got an Orchid to silence whoever makes the first mistake. And there's the multi hero initiation from Just Better, as Just Better still needs space to bring their troll online with an RP like that. They will at least get two, one of which being the. Rin CQ Chaos Knight just getting taken apart and now this troll slowly but surely starting to have impact. It was in part because Centaur War Runner decided not to initiate there. He actually waits until he can set up for the free kill with Dandy and they will catch that free kill on the backline of that fight. Yes, it's gonna be Magnus setting up a nice skewer just to buy some space during the team fight for the troll to go ham. But troll, he had already killed the Chaos Knight twice. But with the IO, that doesn't change the fact that Chaos Knight is still borderline full health. 
And it looks like a Troll Warlord alone does not have enough damage for the Chaos Knight plus Io. Oh, that's awkward. I mean, I understand the... Four man smoke emerging with a two man skewer into RP. They will catch Dandy. They will focus on Dandy. Dandy down. Troll this time around. He learned his lesson. Goes on the Bane before pressing the ultimate. Will be killing off the Bane. And Troll still holding on to that ultimate just for good measure as he kills off the IO and now what are you gonna do CK? Now he can press that ultimate without worrying much. Focus. He waited so long to be able to do this. Last team fight he kind of tried and the short range the relocate ruined that one but this time around not only is he able to start hitting people he's also waiting distinctly for the Chaos Knight to be the last person he hits. Not pressing an ultimate but doesn't really want to invest any larger amount of resources there either. Troll with the ultimate looking for the centaur kill. Can he get it? Nope. He dies the first time without even being able to press the ultimate. Second time's the charm, I guess. But Troll Ward instantly jumped once, instantly jumped twice. Bane holding him down and no ultimate. Without the battle trends and with 80 seconds no troll, the game could very well be over here as Chaos Knight makes sure him and his IO get a little bit of a bonus kill out of that one. Ooh, nice little initiation attempt. A Centaur War Runner. Few more hits for him to die. Troll is on the pursuit, but Troll oversteps a little bit, gets caught by the Chaos Knight, and drawn back just a little too much by the ultimate from the Keeper of the Light. However, now Io is there to save the Chaos Knight but once again, just getting him back a little bit, and the Bane ultimate having tons and tons of impact. And one for one, not the worst of stars, but you gotta consider that it's Bait who are relentlessly trying to push up this high ground still. Chaos Knight. Bam! Blows up another one. It's still just frontlining against the troll. Doesn't really care much thanks to that Keeper of the Light impact. As there's the two-man skewer out of position. Io. Trying to stay alive with that Aeon disc, but will not in fact. Troll still feeling quite confident about this, but without the IO it also means Chaos Knight is not long for this world. Look at Troll's insane attack speed. That's gonna be a double kill for Focus, and that's gonna be Bait losing their carry for only a little bit of tower damage. And no wrecks, no actual objectives, as Magnus is now getting chased after as well by a Troll who can just keep purging anything the Magnus throws at him and now got enough fervor for the attack speed he won. There he goes. Took him a little bit to make a good connect. Is he gonna go for the tower? Looks like it. But it's Magnus. Lotus Orb or no Lotus Orb is gonna die eventually. I love how they double try to save the Magnus just for him to still die. But with the Magnus dying, Troll once again feels confident going on the Chaos Knight and he is but only until he gets stuck over on the high ground has to go down now. Once again wants to go for this decay though and Io comes on in with the rescue attempt. Nice one. That was actually really close for bait, but they do manage to get one of their teammates out. Well, their carry, I should say. They and there's the initiation from the Dragonite onto the Keeper of the Light. Keeper of the Light got an Aeon to save him with, as well as a nice ultimate from Dendi. But, well, Dendi did get that ultimate out. It's only buying them a little bit of space before the Troll Warlord starts hitting and he doesn't stop. Double for the Troll, Io gets nuked down as well. Looking for more with a beautiful lasso initiation on the Keeper of the Light. And Dendi will die, even though the gem hits the floor. Troll, he may just be tempted to go again. As a triple buyback comes out, he decides to change his mind and... Get away as quickly as he can. 
But with the Magnus still buying back, the fight is gonna keep going. Another Willow Wisp has been killed. Two Willow Wisp getting popped in just one fight. With the troll front lining, I don't think they're gonna go back anytime soon. As a matter of fact, minus the Bane, this would have been a full team wipe. As now Troll, the one pushing through and the one looking for some major X objectives. That's gonna be one lane done, two lanes, not quite done. Nice ultimate from the Bane, but guess what? Troll, he just presses ultimate, goes for the kill on Stomanyan instead. Stomanyan. Not like he could have done anything differently there, but at this point the game is just pretty much GG's. They call it as they know full well. Troll could have just BK beat and kept attacking. But we have had a really long first series of the day, ladies and gentlemen.